Recently, numerous headlines have discussed private insurance companies successfully suing the federal government and Medicare over what they claimed were wrongfully calculated at star ratings for their Medicare Advantage plans that they're offering in 2024. I'll see you in court. These headlines, they might just seem like more insurance industry jargon, but these lawsuits could have real impacts on your Medicare Advantage options going forward. And even more importantly, they show just how vital Medicare Advantage star ratings are to the private insurance companies that offer these plans. My name is Cameron Giardini, and I help operate our family-run Medicare-focused insurance agency called Giardini Medicare. To work with us or one of our brokers, you can go to our website, gmedicareteam.com, to schedule a free call. In in today's video, we are going to pull back the curtain on the world of Medicare Advantage plan star ratings. We will explain what they are, how they're calculated, why they're so important to the insurance companies, and what you should or should not be concerned with when it comes to the star ratings of Medicare Advantage plans in your area. Like always, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future videos, and make sure to comment below for any specific topics you want us to cover in the future. First, as a brief reminder, despite often being called Part C, Medicare Advantage plans, they are not part of Original Medicare, and instead they are offered by private insurance companies as an alternative to Original Medicare. Typically, Medicare Advantage plans, they bundle the services of Medicare Part A, Part B, and Part D into one plan, and they also offer extra benefits not covered by Original Medicare. These insurance companies offering Medicare Advantage plans, they are able to do this because they receive funding directly from the federal government to offer these plans. Part of this funding depends on the plan's star rating, which we will break down shortly. Although standalone Part D plans also do receive star ratings just like Medicare Advantage plans, the impacts of these star ratings, they are generally more significant for Medicare Advantage plans. So to keep things simple, we will only be discussing Medicare Advantage star ratings in today's video. Medicare Advantage plans, they are rated on a scale from one to five stars, with five stars representing excellent performance and one star representing poor performance. Plans with a three-star rating are considered average, while plans with a two-star rating are considered below average, indicating they may have some issues in certain areas. Lastly, four-star plans would be considered above average using this rating system. These star ratings, they provide a more straightforward way for consumers like yourself to assess the overall quality of a Medicare Advantage plan that you're considering. If you want to find the different star ratings for plans in your area, the easiest way to do this, in our opinion, is by using the online medicare.gov plan finder tool, which you can see here an example on the screen. This will show you the specific star ratings for each of the plans offered in your county. So going back quickly in time, Medicare Advantage plan star ratings were established in 2007 as an additional tool for consumers to use when selecting Medicare Advantage plans. The star rating system was then expanded in 2010 due to the passage of the Affordable Care Act. One of the most impactful changes to star ratings from the ACA was the implementation of newly created quality bonus payments, which began in 2012. These bonus payments provide increased payments to Medicare Advantage plans that receive a star rating of four or higher. Now, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, these quality bonus payments, they were created to encourage Medicare Advantage plans to compete for you, the enrollee, based on plan quality. These quality bonus payments, they are not small payments by any means. According to the Medicare Payment Advisory Commission, or MedPAC. In 2024 alone, these quality bonus payments will result in $15 billion in increased federal spending for Medicare Advantage. So the importance of these star ratings really cannot be overstated. Unlike when it comes to finding a new restaurant to eat at, the star ratings are not calculated like Google or Yelp reviews. They are not just calculated based on the overall average of what actual plan members think about their Medicare Advantage plan. Instead, for Medicare Advantage plans that include prescription drug coverage, the star ratings are based on up to 40 unique quality performance measures, and for Medicare Advantage only contracts that do not include prescription drug coverage, there are up to 30 measures that they base star ratings on. These measures, they cover a wide range of categories, and Medicare does publish a very detailed report about how star ratings are calculated. We will link to that report, but you can see here on that report that Medicare Advantage plans receive star ratings based on five different distinct categories. 
categories. These include staying healthy, managing chronic long-term conditions, member experience with the health plan, members' complaints, and changes in the health plan's performance, and health plan customer service. Now, the four categories that are considered for prescription drug coverage include drug plan customer service, member complaints, and changes in plan performance, member experience with the drug plan, and drug safety and accuracy of drug pricing. CMS, or Medicare, uses data from various sources to ensure the accuracy and reliability of Medicare Advantage star ratings. These sources, they include the healthcare effectiveness data and information set, also consumer assessments of healthcare providers and systems, health outcome surveys, and CMS administrative data. Now that you know how star ratings are calculated, this brings us to the heart of the video. Why are Medicare Advantage star ratings so crucial to the insurance companies providing these plans? This will be surprising to nobody, but as we already alluded to it, the answer comes down to money. Let's talk about the money. Money! Let's go over some examples. First, it will help to familiarize yourself with an overview of the Medicare Advantage payment system and how plans are funded. To better understand terms like benchmark, bid, and rebate that we will be using, we will link to a document in the video description, which gives you a full overview of the funding process. We also do have more information about this in our free online course, which you can access by going to gmedcourse.com. For now, just understand that the term benchmark represents the amount Medicare expects to spend on an average beneficiary in a specific area if they were to only have original Medicare and not a Medicare Advantage plan. These benchmarks are then compared to the bids that Medicare Advantage companies submit to the government. Bids, they reflect the plan's estimated cost for providing Medicare Part A and Part B services to the average beneficiary that enrolls in their plan. Insurance companies, they then receive rebates based on the difference between the bid and the benchmark, which they can then use to provide extra benefits not covered by original Medicare. Finally, Medicare Advantage plans with a four-star rating or higher receive quality bonus payments, which increase their benchmarks and then therefore will increase their rebates. Let's bring these concepts to life with specific examples of the payments that plans with different star ratings might receive. For each of these plans, we will assume that the benchmark payment by Medicare is set at $1,000 per month and the bid by each of these plans is $850 per month. First, for a three-star rated plan, there are no bonus payments. So they receive 50% between that bid and the benchmark amount, which would amount to $925 per month in total payments to that plan. This happens when we add the bid and the rebate amounts together. Shifting to a 3.5 star rated plan, despite still not receiving a quality bonus payment, the plan would receive 60% of that bid to benchmark difference for the rebate. This would increase that plan's total payment from the federal government to $940 per month, which is $15 per month more per person compared to that three star rated plan we just talked about. A four star rated plan would be the first to benefit from quality bonus payments, which would come in the form of raising the benchmark by either five or 10%, depending on the county the plan is offered in. In this case, the benchmark would increase to either $1,050 or $1,100 due to that bonus adjustment. Just like with the 3.5 star rated plan, this four star rated plan would receive 60% of the difference between the bid and the elevated benchmark. This would result in a total payment of $900 $170 per month in a normal 5% bonus county or $1,000 per month in a double bonus 10% county. As we will see, the benefits are even greater for a Medicare Advantage plan that receives 4.5 or 5 star ratings. These plans, they would also receive quality bonus payments, which would increase their benchmarks to $1,050 or $1,100, just like we talked about with that 4 star rated plan. However, these plans would then receive 70% of that bid to benchmark difference. This means that a 4.5 star or 5 star rated plan could receive $990 per month in a typical county or in a double bonus county, they could receive payments as high as $1,025 per month. Now these differences, they may seem relatively small and incremental, but when you multiply this by the number of enrollees in these plans, they result in significant revenue impacts. Just know that in real life, more factors do go into these payment calculations so this is just an example of the impacts of star ratings and not the exact revenue numbers that companies are generating. 
Using the numbers from our example, if we look at United Healthcare, which has the largest overall number of Medicare Advantage enrollees, with 7.76 million enrollees in 2024, according to Telos Actuarial, we can get a better feel for just how much star ratings can impact an insurance company's funding. Here on the screen, you can see the difference in total payments that United Healthcare would receive if they were to have different star ratings ranging from three up to five stars, again, using those numbers that we previously calculated. You can see here that by only changing the star rating and nothing else, the difference in total revenue for a company like United Healthcare could be almost $7 billion per year when you compare the three-star rated plan to the 4.5 or five-star rated plan. Also, you can see the different steps of increasing payments that go between three to five stars. Based on our calculations, it appears the largest jump in payments to Medicare Advantage plans occurs when a plan is able to make that jump from 3.5 stars up to four stars. And this makes perfect sense when we know that those plans then become eligible for those quality bonus payments. To connect our example to the real world, according to KFF data in 2023, United Health received $3.9 billion due to quality bonus payments. And you can also see on this chart the different quality bonus payments for different insurance companies. Now that you understand exactly how star ratings can impact the funding of Medicare Advantage plans and what they receive, we can highlight some additional impacts that star ratings may have on Medicare Advantage plans. Again, remember that rebates to Medicare Advantage plans, they directly impact the benefits offered by a plan. According to MedPAC, the rebates that Medicare Advantage plans receive, they must be used to provide additional benefits to enrollees in the form of lower cost sharing, meaning that certain services may have lower copays than they would without these rebate payments. Plans also use rebate payments to lower overall plan premiums or or increase the supplemental benefits that they offer. Plans may also devote some rebates to administrative cost and profits. According to the Kaiser Family Foundation, because four-star or higher plans have higher benchmarks compared to plans with lower star ratings, insurance companies can also just increase their bid amount and spend more money to pay medical providers to expand their network with more expensive physicians and facilities. Or as we mentioned, they might simply retain more money as profits. I'm keeping the money. We can look at some of the overall numbers to quantify just how much money insurance companies receive due to star ratings and quality bonus payments because according to MedPAC in 2024, the average Medicare Advantage plan enrollee will be in a plan receiving $2,329 in rebates for the year from the government. This directly results in $2,142 worth of extra benefits provided by the Medicare Advantage plan to you, the consumer. When understanding just how much money Medicare Advantage plans are earning due to star ratings and quality bonus payments, it's no surprise that as quality bonus payments have increased, so has the overall percentage of Medicare Advantage enrollment. According to MedPAC, rebates to Medicare Advantage plans have more than doubled from 2018 to 2023. And you can see here on this chart how rebate dollars have increased since 2012 when the ACA first implemented quality bonus payments. Not surprisingly, when we combine this graph of rebates rebates with the graph showing the overall percentage of Medicare beneficiaries enrolled in Medicare Advantage plans over time, we can see a pretty similar trend. Aside from plans receiving additional funding due to increased star ratings, there are other slightly less obvious benefits for a plan having higher star ratings. First, even if it is subconscious, people are generally more drawn to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan with a higher star rating. Many people, they do look at star ratings as a quick and reliable measure of plans overall quality and performance. Whether it's true or not, higher rated plans are often perceived as more trustworthy and capable of providing better care. Enrollment trends seem to back this up since in 2024, nearly three quarters of Medicare Advantage enrollees are enrolled in a plan receiving quality bonus payments, while only 42 percent of total Medicare Advantage plans are receiving these bonus payments. Another benefit is provided to plans receiving the highest five-star rating. Unlike most plans, these five-star plans are able to enroll new members throughout the year using a five-star special enrollment period as seen here on Medicare.gov. This gives them a unique marketing advantage over their competitors to grow their overall plan membership. Overall, think of Medicare Advantage star ratings as the insurance equivalent of Michelin stars for a restaurant. Just as a higher Michelin 
one star rating attracts more diners and boosts a restaurant's reputation and revenue, higher Medicare star ratings draw in more beneficiaries, and they enhance the plan's overall financial performance. This creates a positive feedback loop where higher star ratings lead to more money, which then is used for more rebates. These provide extra benefits, lower out-of-pocket costs to members, and more. And then these improvements, they make the plan more attractive to other consumers. This leads to increased enrollments and then possibly even higher star ratings in the future, continuing that cycle. But what about all these lawsuits we mentioned at the beginning of the video? What went wrong in 2024 causing insurance companies to sue Medicare? A notable example is the lawsuit filed by Scan Health. Scan argued that CMS or Medicare improperly applied new methods when calculating plan star ratings in 2024. According to Scan, these methods, they unfairly penalized the plan, dropping their star rating all the way from 4.5 stars to 3.5 stars, which, of course, cost them significant quality bonus payments. According to Healthcare Finance, these changes to the methodology for Medicare star rating calculations were due to guardrail rule changes in 2022 and something called the Tukey Outlier System in 2023. Now, understanding these methodologies is not important, but essentially, each of these methods were designed to work together to eliminate the impact of data outliers on plan star ratings while creating more predictable and stable star ratings. Instead, plans like SCAN have argued that these changes they were not implemented properly and Medicare has made it harder for plans to achieve a higher star rating. This resulted in lower star ratings for plans across the board in 2024 when compared to 2023 and 2022. And you can see this directly here from the data published by Medicare itself. Federal courts recently released their ruling on the lawsuit and they did rule in favor of SCAN. They stated that if Medicare had not improperly changed their rating criteria, SCAN would have received a higher rating on two measures and an overall star rating of four stars. A rating that would make the organization eligible for approximately $250 million in additional funding from the federal government. SCAN is not alone with these lawsuits, with companies like Elevance, Zing, and Renown's Hometown Health filing similar lawsuits, with Elevance also receiving a favorable ruling shortly after SCAN. These lawsuits, they could have an even larger impact on the overall Medicare Advantage industry, as Medicare announced on June 13th that they would be recalculating all of the Medicare Advantage plan star ratings for 2024. Importantly, these recalculations, they can only result in increased star ratings. So if a plan's rating would decrease based on the new calculations compared to their previous 2024 rating, Medicare will not lower their star rating for this year. Medicare Advantage plans that do have increases to their quality bonus payments due to these recalculations will be able to resubmit their bid for Medicare Advantage for 2025. These recalculations are going to be especially important heading into next year when Medicare Advantage plans face larger financial pressures than usual, as we talked about in our previous video. So after everything we've discussed in this video, should you care about Medicare Advantage star ratings when you're considering which plan to enroll in? Now the answer, like always, is nuanced. While star ratings are important in helping you understand the overall quality of a plan, we don't think that they are the sole factor you should use in making your decision. Like we talked about, star ratings are not without their problems. Some have argued that the system for how star ratings are calculated allow plans to just focus on a few specific metrics to improve their star ratings without actually increasing their plan's quality. Also, MedPAC, they have stated for the past several years, the commission has concluded that the current state of quality reporting is such that we cannot provide an accurate description of the quality of care across MA plans with this information. When you are personally trying to choose a Medicare Advantage plan, first and foremost, consider the specific benefits benefits offered by the plan. Make sure the plan includes your preferred doctors and hospitals in the network. Make sure it covers your necessary medications. Make sure it provides the right coverage based on your health and offers additional benefits that you feel are important to you. Star ratings can be a useful tool, but they are just one piece of the overall puzzle. If you find yourself comparing two plans that seem equally suitable for you based on their benefits, then the star ratings could be a helpful tiebreaker. A higher star rated plan might indicate a higher level of service and quality and more consistent performance over time, which could tip the scales in favor of one plan versus the other. However, at the same time, after helping thousands of Medicare enrollees with their coverage, we have seen people have issues and complaints with every single insurance company, whether they have a low star rating or even the highest five-star rating. Don't assume that you are not going to have potential headaches with even the highest of rated plans. But with that being said, plans with abnormally low star ratings might be good to avoid when possible because Medicare might turn 
terminate those plans contracts if it has a star rating of less than three stars for three consecutive years. Remember, Medicare Advantage plans, they change every single year. Benefits, provider networks, and even star ratings can and will fluctuate. So like always, review your coverage every single year.